hello there welcome to this week's tutorial in this video i'm going to show you how to set up a simple multiple search or filter in your wix website so as you can see right over here we have elements that enable you to actually search or filter your content so from here we have the filter by cousin we have the filter by location and i'm using a drop down for this and i'm using a radio element for this for the location and then we have the um search bar that enables us to search by the title so what we're going to do here is first of all when we search by cousin and when you click on the search you're going to find out that all items containing the selected item which is french will be displayed another fun fact is that the pagination bar also works with the filter so as you can see we have six items found and normally we have six items displayed on one page of our repeater and as you can see that really works fine another fun fact is we can combine these together with this um, drop down and when we click on the search we're going to combine the value of the location and the value of the cuisine and we're going to find that we have our items as you can see this is worldwide all the locations all items with, with location worldwide are displayed and all items with uh, both french and worldwide are displayed okay and we can go ahead to also clear the filter and we're going to go back to the default way the repeater and the filter elements were another thing is we can also search using the title so for example we can search using this title i'm going to go ahead to highlight that and then i'm going to copy that and paste that on the search bar then when i click on the search you're going to see we have one item that is displaying um only an item here okay so this is what i'm going to do i'm going to show you how to set this up and before we get started don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up and you can also check out my other tutorials so let's jump into the editor first of all what you want to do is to set up your filter if you haven't done so or if you already have your filter you have multiple elements you want to use then this is where you're going to have to place them so let's say you want to add more items you want to use different elements for this um, feature you can head onto the input section and then you're going to find a number of input elements that you can actually use to filter so for example you can use the radio buttons which is what i have used for the location you can go ahead to check out the check boxes these are the multi check boxes so you can use these you can also use a sim a single check box for example you want to uh, allow them to check for one item okay you can just use the single check box and then we have the drop down we have all the selection tags we have date and time we have the slider and many more okay so i'm only going to use the drop down i'm going to use the radio buttons and i'm also going to use a an input or text input element and finally i have a button right over here this button is going to allow me to search all the items okay so the next thing i added was the count feature now this will enable, enable the visitors to actually know how many content you have and how many content matches your filter or search so this is a pretty uh, interesting thing to add you can go over to your text to add a text element for that head to the text and drag any of these onto your website and then you can just um, design or edit your text element okay so enough with the editing and contents to add um, maybe before we go into the code I added a little button a vector art element over here so you can head to the plus and then to the decorative and from here you can find icons so you can head to the more icons and then you can look for any icons that matches what you want so here you can just um, type in x and hit enter now you can see that there are multiple elements that you can actually use for your clear filter so if you don't want to use the vector art you can also use the um, basic shapes so we have more options you have more options here so you can go ahead to choose any of the options that matches or that best suits your brand okay so next we're going to make sure to turn on our dev mode from here so head to the dev mode hover on that and then turn on your dev mode this will enable us to make use of the code section and to make this tutorial very functional now this is the code i have used and i promise this is a very simple um a code it though it looks a lot but this is a very simple code 
I'm going to start from the beginning and as you can see we have a library here this library is the Wix data and of course we need to use that because we're trying to retrieve data from our database okay so we import this data because we're going to make use of the Wix data uh, function right here in our code the next thing we have is the already function okay, and then next we have a search button which is the id of my search button so if we head back into the code this right over here is my search button and the id is called search button so what you're going to do is to open up your properties panel if you can find this panel right over here click on this icon and you're going to find your properties panel and here you can change the id to whatever you want but i want mine to be called search button and then inside of the search button on click function you can see that i have another function called search and this search is the main function in this code this is what allows the code to actually work and uh, when you click on that you can see that it's been highlighted everywhere it was used in the code and right over here is the main function and we're going to get to this function in a while but what i just did is when the user clicks on the search button i want the function to run okay so that is just what i did here and then the next one that i did is that when the uh this is the search bar okay and i added an on key press event and if the event is when the user clicks on the enter key on their keyboard then i also want the function to run so when we head back into our page and then i copy this title or let's take this title for example i copy that into my search bar and then i click on the enter key on my keyboard you can see that the code ran and then it searched the exact title which is this title over here okay so that is what this section does this section just allows us to make use of the enter key press event okay and then to the main function which is the search function now inside this function we have our data set already function now this means that the code inside of our data set already function is going to work when the data set is ready okay and here we have used the data set set filter function to combine multiple fields to filter from our database okay so the first line that you see over here is the first line that filters our cuisine all right and then the second one is the one that filters the location and the third one is the one that filters the title so i'm going to go over the first one which is the one that filters the cuisine okay uh, the first thing you're going to change is the field key right over here is your field key so this is the field key of my cousin field in my database and i'm going to show you that in a while and then right over here is the value that i'm trying to filter and as you can see this is the id indicator for my drop down one and my drop down is the drop down that actually filters my cousin okay so i'm going to go into my database to show you the id or the field keys that i have used all right so right here we i have used three fields as you can see i have three elements so i'm going to filter three fields in my database so the first one is the title and over here when you click on the properties you can see that under the field key you can find the field key of a title so you're going to copy this into your code and the next one i used is the location okay and over here at the field key you're going to see the field key so here is the field key the field key is like the id and it is only special to each field and finally we have the cousin field which is the field that i'm still trying to discuss is the field key right over here is called cousin and right over here you can see that this is the cousin field and i have only two options and the option here are french and italian and you can see that from here i also have two options which are french and italian so when you're filling up your drop down values you're going to make sure that you use these exact values just copy these values into your drop down okay and then for the location you can see i have only worldwide and london so you can also do well to add more options to your radio uh, element and then add as many um, values you have on your database all right so let's get back to the field key that we were discussing so the, the cuisine field key is called cuisine and i have added that here it is case sensitive so you want to make sure you copy that into your code and as we as i mentioned before this is the value of my drop down so whatever value my drop down is or is being selected is what is going to be matched with what is found in my cuisine field 
and then we use the dot and method to combine the values of other items that we also want to search if we're going to do so and over here you can see that we use the location okay the location is the field key of the location field and then we also use the id of the location element in this case the location element is my radio buttons okay and you're going to match whatever value that the user has selected now the final finally we're going to talk about the search bar so here we have the uh field key of our search bar and the, the field the search bar only searches the title of our data from our database okay and over here is the search bar uh, id indicator so this is our search bar over here and the id is called search bar okay and what i did next is to use the dot then method to also count whatever value matches our filter and this count here is a function which we're going to jump onto next so this is the function that counts our filter and before we we go to the fu the count function i'm going to show you this one right over here this is the clear filter button okay it's the vector art that i added which is right over here this element is hidden on load and the reason is because i don't want the user to actually see that there is uh, a clear filter until they change the, the click on this button or when the uh, filter the search filter function is being called so if you refresh this page for example you're going to find that the clear filter button is hidden until the user actually selects an item and and clicks on the search button okay so that is a very interactive process that i just added into this line of the code so let's head back into our code so now we're in the count function and what the count function uses is the data set get total count function okay so we use this to get the total number of items that were found in the code uh, in the filter or when the page loads and then we're going to display that total number inside of our text element so right over here we have the id of our count text elements and it's called count text so if we head back into the code and we click on that you can see right over here that the id is called count text you can also go ahead to change the id right over here the properties panel okay so i'm going to leave mine as count text and here we have used the template literal to actually indicate the behavior of how the text displays so we want to be able to say uh the total number and then we're going to add another item that's another word or a phrase that says items found so right over here is the total number of the count that was found we don't know how many it is and it's actually a number and then we're going to add the items found so if no item was found then we're going to change the text that the uh display that's been displayed to no item found okay and then next we have a very a very nice interactive feature that i have added to the pagination so whenever the user clicks on the pagination we want to scroll to the anchor so this is an anchor element that i've added we want to scroll to the anchor and if we go back to the page editor you can see that we have an anchor over here so anytime the user clicks on the pagination the page is going to scroll to the top of the page and then it's going to get to where the anchor is being um is located so to add your anchor head to the add and then you're going to go over to the menu and anchor and then here you're going to find the anchor so drag and drop the anchor into your page and then you are good to go okay and that does the uh, pagination so let me just show you a very quick demonstration of that when you click on that for example you see how my page scrolls to the top and that is exactly what i want to do and this is very useful for the user because imagine you have much more than six items displayed let's say you have 20 items displayed and you're going to scroll down to the end of your page and the user wants to go to the next page when they click on the next and then they will be scrolled back to the top and then they will keep scrolling that is a very interactive process that you would find useful okay so the next one we have is the clear filter now the clear filter is also very interactive and it's also a very great feature to have when you have a filter or search in your website okay so let's take for example that we, we need to um, search the cuisine for french and we click on the uh, search button now you you see we have this clear filter when we click on that it resets the filter and then it also resets our repeater 
so that is what we have added over here we have set the values of our drop down element our search bar element our location element to undefined when the clear filter is clicked and then finally we are also going to um, hide the clear filter button okay so you notice when i clicked on that it's actually hidden and we want that to be hidden and that is a very clean way to make sure that your filter doesn't look too crowdy and many items are just everywhere okay and next we have the data set set filter that actually goes ahead to reset the repeater and we are also going to count again how many items are being displayed okay and for the last part of this code is that when the page loads we want to also count how many items were found so we i use the uh, uh, data set and ready function and then i called the uh, count function right inside of it so when the page loads when the items have been displayed on your repeater this text also has counted how many items are available in your data set okay so that is all about the code so you can go over your code again if your code doesn't work don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section or you can shoot me a message in the link in the description okay so we have we have a very simple interactive um fil uh, simple multiple search and filter elements that you can actually make use of and you can use other elements to actually replace this and it works pretty fine okay you can use multiple drop downs you can add more drop downs you can add more radio elements and you can use your search bar or other items that you want to use okay so that is it about this tutorial i hope that you really did enjoy don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel as i have more and amazing videos just like this coming your way all right so thank you very much and see you in the next tutorial